This week on Sport Fishing, we're doing something totally different for us. We haven't done a twilight trip in over 15 years, and today we're heading out of Long Beach aboard the Enterprise. We're gonna go twilight fishing. Now these are a little bit different. This is a Southern California type of thing where the boat leaves the dock around 6.30, 6 o'clock. We head out and we fish nighttime. We usually get in about one o'clock in the morning, so you never know what to expect. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. years here they uh, up the limit size 14 inches on the sand bass. I'm just going to grab this fish, bring them over here to our measure, close the mouth, lay them down flat here. I measure them to the middle of the tail. Some people stretch it out. And we have a legal fish right there. First legal fish of the night here. They've been biting really late in the evening here so uh, sit on this thing and hopefully they bite her. There we go, the winner. <laughs> so far the winner. <laughs> Flurry going, three going, oh, three going. Crap. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing this week, fishing on a twilight trip. You never know what to expect, if it's going to be barracuda, sand bass, calico bass. You might even get lucky and get some halibut and white sea bass too. So you got to be prepared. You have to have bucktails and also good live bait hooks. I like to use a bucktail. So you can use like a half ounce, one ounce, 
or even up to a six ounce bucktail. And it just depends on the current. Now remember, we're targeting fish in the two to six, eight pound class. So even a six ounce bucktail, it looks big to you and me, but to a six or eight pound bass, this looks like a little French fry. So what you wanna do is use the lightest one that you can, and you want that bait to come all the way down the bottom and fall slowly. If there's no current, you're gonna to wanna to go with the light one. But if there's lots of current, you wanna go with the six ounce or four ounce, and just let that flutter down through the current and the fish will come up and hit it. These work great for the calicos and the sand bass, day or nighttime, twilight it works really good too. Now if you're gonna stick with the live bait, and there's times when you wanna do that, you wanna make sure you have a good hook. And there's lots of hooks on the market. I really recommend the Mustad hooks. And there's a bunch of different styles, but these are two basic styles I would always keep in my tackle box. So this one here is the 94151, and this is a more rounded hook, a heavier hook. This is a hook I like to use when there's yellowtail and stuff like that in the water. But for this type of fishing, a twilight fishing, think of something like this. This is the 9174. It's a much thinner hook, profile hook. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit thinner, and I really like it for fishing with the small anchovies, small sardines, when you're going for these smaller game fish. Fish like this that are under 10 pounds, this hook is perfect for it. It's a little bit lighter and your bait's gonna swim better in the water. Both techniques will work, but there'll just be times when you're on the water and the fish only want live bait, or they only want that cut squid, then make sure you're using that mustad hook. If they're biting the bucktails and that bait's falling through the water plane and they're getting aggressive and they're chasing it, use one of the bucktails and you do really good with it. So that's a basic tackle you should have in your tackle box. Have some bucktails and have some good live bait hooks because you never know what you're going to need and chances are you're going to need both of them. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> California scorpion fish. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Oh, the best, it's one of the best looking. eating fish around. Best eating fish around, pretty much in my book. But uh, really they pack good. a wallop. Pack a wallop. If you, you get you. stuck, if you get stuck, it hurts really bad for about 10 minutes, and then you die. Oh. No, just kidding. But uh, yeah, very good eating fish. Do not want to get stuck by it. That's Let the deck hands okay. handle it. I think they have to see it. Keep them 10 inches long. 10 inches. Yeah. And that one is about legal. Yay. Nice right there. Beautiful Woo. fish, beautiful fish. That is a cool looking fish. Fish caught a lady. Woohoo! Feel like a bass, Jose? What does it feel like? There it is, nice color. Straight up, lift it up. I'm coming home around the Thank Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Cabazon. Do you believe that's a 15 inch size limit? This one's a little bit too small. Oh well. <laughs> and we're gonna let him go. A little action for you there. Yeah, something. At there least. You go. Love to watch the pros at work. Wine and bud. Good job. Here it comes. Turn the handle. Wine, 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 wine. When you let a little bit of lime poop, would you rot straight down for me? There you go, buddy. Which fish is it? That's a real question. Oh, that's his. Right on. 
Put, put your rod butt down. I'm trying to get out of my sleeve. There you go. <laughs> Jackpot winner. That's true, this is the light. Hang on. Okay, you got one too, Jose. Now he's coming in. Oh, oh it just came off. All right. Uh, Woo! That's a nice one. Look at that. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Just switched over to a live sardine with a sliding sinker. And Skipper suggested, Captain Frank suggested that we switch over to that. Here's my fish right here. Oh, nice sand bass. That's that sliding sinker, live bait hook. Nice quality sand bass. Nice, beautiful fish. All right, well, we're gonna take a little break from the action. And uh, when we return, I'll be catching more of these. But let's take a little break right now and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious sand bass we're catching. This week in the galley, we're in Seal Beach, California at Walsh Wharf. It's a restaurant I came to about 15 years ago. I'm sure uh, Chef Christian here was still in school back then. Yeah. But uh, thanks for inviting us out today, Thank Chef. Thank you for having us. And what is it you have in store for us? So today we're doing a uh, local uh, halibut right on our oak grill. What we have here is uh, the garlic butter. Lather it. You want to season heavily because with the grill, I mean, most of the salt or seasoning is going to fall through anyway, so you want to season heavily. Once it's on the grill, lather the top part. Once again, season heavily. So when you're grilling fish, you wanna, you want, you can see the difference right here is a little pink, raw, and on the bottom there's a little white coloration. You want at least like quarter of an inch or half an inch, and it's ready to flip because you don't want to overcook your fish. You want it nice, medium rare in the middle. Now I'm ready, getting ready to flip it. The garlic butter. I got the cauliflower stems, and we're just gonna throw it up on a grill. All right, so our fish is ready to go. Little greens are ready. So I'm gonna place the uh, cauliflower puree in the bottom. How that goes next. So what we have right here is um, some Romanesco, white cauliflower, and uh, delicata squash. It's all taped together with some uh, shallots, olive oil, and salt. Our greens. And our uh, cauliflower couscous. And that's it for our halibut. It looks really good. Let's go for a bite. And it falls apart really nice, too. Mmm. That's good. Let me try the sauce. That is really, really good. good. Right? Compliments of fish really good, right? Yeah, this is good. And nice local halibut. Nothing like local fish, fresh fish. And this restaurant's been here for many, many years. Yes. What was it, 30 years? Um, yeah, 30 years. More than 30 years. Over 30 years? Over 30 years. Yeah, that's great. It's a great dish. Like I said, I haven't been here for 15, okay. but uh, I might take this to the table and go enjoy this. <laughs> go ahead. That's pretty cool. But yep. thanks, Chef. Thank you. It's really fun. Thank you for Remember, we're at Walsh Wharf in Seal Beach, California. Come on down here, try a fish dish like this. It's really good. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Nice little sand bass right there. Thanks.
Small. Pretty fish though. Let's go ahead and let him go. Yep. Yeah, California scorpion fish here. One of the best eating fish we have on our coast, in my opinion. Uh, hurts bad, really bad. You do not want to get stuck by one of these. Let your deck hand handle them if you don't know how to handle them yourself. The top spines here on the back. The lower anal spines and the two four spines are the part of the spines you have to really worry about. But it, it can really hurt for up to hours, sometimes for some people, even days. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut off these, these spines that can actually really get you. That way we can practice caution. That gets you're handling them. Someone's walking by the bag or the deck ends are playing them on the way home there. What number are you, Jim? Six. Six, there he is. With a haircut, ready to go. <laughs> California scorpion fish, look at that, it only has one eye. Beautiful. Line of one eye. Very good eating fish right there. Yes. Good job, bud. Thanks. I'll pop on him, bud. It's a nice steady wine, okay? Thank you. that one up. Not very good, not very good. Nice go, Ben. There goes another one. Another bass. There's your All limit. Right. That's five. <laughs> five already. Wow. Oh, oh you got it. All right. The kids on now. Father and son. Mine Jose, to see it. Smile. See what happens? You put a good live bait on there. Father and son, both on. I measure him up, but looks pretty close. Nice stand bass. Good job, bud. Let me go measure him up for you. Thank you. A bit like a bat. Fish. Oh, 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 oh. That's a 
that way. That way. Fishing a bucktail with a piece of squid on there. I don't know if it's a sculpin or a bass. It's starting to feel like a bass now. Let's see what I got here. Let's see what it is. Here's my fish. There's my sand bass. Nice. Nice sand bass on the bucktail. Beautiful fish. We haven't done a trip like this in years, so it's nice to come out and do, go twilight fishing. And this boat, the Enterprise, is a boat I used to fish way back in college days. So it's nice to be back out on it again. Having a great time out here with Captain Frank and the crew and all the passengers with us. It's a lot of fun. Nice fish here on the bucktail. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action and we'll return. I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Did you know that a bat ray can grow to the width of three feet, four feet, or six feet wide? That's right, a bat ray can grow to be six feet wide. For this week's tip of the week, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we caught these fish and it was all about listening to the crew. Our captain, Captain Frank, told us when the fish get really hungry to switch over to live sardines. And it made a big difference. It wasn't until about 10 o'clock tonight that the fish really bit, and he told us to wait till then that the fish would get active, and that's what happened. Between 10 o'clock and midnight, we got the majority of the fish today, and the majority of them all came on live um, sardines. We started out catching fish on squid, cut squid, but after 10 o'clock, it was all live sardines. It was really good fishing. Well, I want to thank Captain Frank and the whole crew of the Enterprise. We had lots of fun fishing with them today. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.